For as long as I can remember, blocks has been a fascinating thing for me. I remember looking at all the family members, male and female, and thinking, this here is just beautiful. My name is Benson Williams. I'm a young filmmaker, currently exploring the ideas around dreadlocks, the concept of the hair and its various titles. Some people get offended by the term dread. And some feel that there is no difference. My correspondent, who helped with the research and communication on this project, also had his views to share. People need to understand that dreadlocks is a recent term um, for this hairstyle that you see here. You know, um, prior to that, um, locks had a, a significant spiritual. Uh, meaning, and this is this dates back to African ideology and culture. Um, if you know the story of Simpson, you know his hair, his locks meant strength, um, not only physical strength but fi uh, spiritual strength. And back in those days, when you took that pledge, that Nazarite pledge, you had such a high, uh, you, you got such a high respect from society, you know, and. I think today, now, it's more so demonized, and it's demonized because of what we've been through as Africans, um, going through the slave trade, um, having everything stripped from us. The, the, the fact that I speak English is, uh, is evidence of you know, what we've been through as, as, as Africans, and now having this spiritual hairstyle called dreadlocks, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wound. I call it. It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual one. How can you call something that was once spiritual, that was one the hierarchy, the hierarchy of our society, now dreadful? There was this lady that I met prior to having dreadlocks, and I and I call her here dreadlocks. I remember the story, um, and she was like, "Don't you ever call my hair, you know, dreadlocks?" Really? Yeah. Don't you call my hair? I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry. She said, "There's nothing dreadful about my hair." You know, my hair is beautiful. My hair has so much meaning. And, and it's not until you get on this, this journey of, of growing your locks that you understand the spiritual significance. And there's so much growth, there's so much humility because the minute you walk in public, people look at you. So you, you, you need to first deal with, you know, criticism. You have negative criticism and you have po positive criticism, but more so negative, you know? So when you step into public, the first thing you learn is how to cope with that. So you learn that and that, that adds to your character, you know? And then you learn about um, um, the, the, the Rastafarian side of it, where they tell you that, you know, you have dreadlocks, you're connected to the earth. Like, wait, what? My hairstyle, you know, connects to the earth. And it's, and it's beautiful if you if you lay down on the grass with your with your locks. It looks like your roots are actually going into the earth. That's so right, freaking right. cool. Like I love that. that <laughs> you know, but then you 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 see this and you're like, wait, what? We're connected to the earth, and then and then the the Rastas believe that you know there's a universal oneness that we are all connected to each other some way somehow, and that this dreadlocks is the root. So I mean, it's like. You're just on this constant journey of, of, of wisdom, you know? And if you meet somebody with locks on their hair for let's say a minimum of eight years, I can tell you that that person has gone through years of transitions, years of change, and that comes with the hairstyle of dreadlocks or locks or whatever you call it. I don't call it dreadlocks, I call it locks. I call it spiritual locks because there's, there's so much spirituality that surrounds um, this hairstyle. If you call it dreadlocks, that means we've been Europeanized. That's the difference. Right. That means because you understand that when the Europeans went to Africa, they saw the hairstyle 
they, 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 they associated it with evil. Because it's scary. You see this thing coming down the street with these long, hairy things out of his head that you've never seen before. It's going to scare you. So, of course, it was dreadful for them, you know. I don't know if you guys know the story of Medusa. That She was a dreadhead. That wasn't snakes on her head. That was dreadlocks, but they call it snakes. You know what I mean? But the thing is, is that they're so ignorant to the fact that snakes are, are, are a sign of wisdom in Africa. So at the end of the day, even though they were demonizing it, they were actually giving us wisdom through the process. So now, since we have a brief history on the term and its origins, let's explore the impact it has on the way society functions around it today. People with this kind of hair have varying experiences and perspectives when it comes to this hair. But before we meet our participants, let's take a listen to what Leo Leiper has to say about his hair first. My life has elevated every year <laughs> that I've had these things on my head. Um, like I tell you, they're spiritual locks. And I don't know, it's like, it's like what the Rasta say, you're, you're one with things. You, you don't feel so disconnected from everything. Like you feel so at one with nature, so at, at one with your brothers and your sisters. Like my love for my, my, my peers and my family and my friends, it has transformed. Like I have a whole new perspective of the word love. I don't look at love as more of an emotion. I look at love as a connection. You know, and I, I realized that the connection I have with people is, is more important than anything else in this world because what I put in you, you put in others. So if I give you love, I know that that love is going to transform into, the, to, to, into someone else. You know, I, I feel like, you know, if you, if you want to change this world, you have to be, you know, you have, you have to be love, you know, you have to be this this organism that understands that we are a part of a whole. We are a part of something much bigger than who we are and every day our actions reflect where we're going in this life. Do you think anyone treated you negatively or, or expressed any kind of like prejudice? Of course, you know what I mean? You you get that a lot from Christian, Christ, the Christian community, um, especially, you know, um, and I know it's no fault to them, you know, I don't really look at them, it's just, just lack of knowledge, you know. The Bible talks about lack of knowledge leading to ignorance and, and lack of understanding leading to ignorance. You know, I, I make it my duty every day to try and understand people, you know. And the most criticism I, I got is from religious people, you know, people who are not even Christianity. I even see Muslims and, and other religious people looking at me a certain type of way. So I know for a fact that, you know, we are targets with, with this hairstyle, you know, and it's because of what this world has made it out to be, you know, and I can't, I can't really look at them in a negative way because if you look on TV, people who are doing negative things are people with this hairstyle. So who can you blame? We have rappers, you know, and I can't blame the rappers. The rappers come from a terrible background. They come from a background where they only see violence. So if you only see violence, you're gonna act violently. But then you gotta understand people. You can't just judge everybody you see by their, their physical char characteristics. You know what I mean? Mm. I've had the opportunity to speak with every kind of representative you can think of when it comes to locks. From the typical wash and retwist every three weeks type people to the fully free form stereotypical rasta like people they were all willing to have conversations with me about the hair but not necessarily on record the participants i did get however were more than happy to share their views and knowledge acquired throughout their locks journey the truth is, uh, the locks uh, up and down Africa, right? The locks is uh, something that you're born with. Really, it's a spiritual vibration. You don't eat certain food. You don't eat certain. It represents the priesthood. That's what it really represents, the priesthood. But um, the coming of Bob Marley and reggae music, what happened is that it became 
something that a lot of people um, latched onto and they latched onto it in terms of um, fashion. So you have a lot of fashionable dread, a lot of fashionable people outside here wearing fashionable locks, right? But uh, the, the locks itself was originally part of the priesthood. If you go in certain part of Africa, Ethiopia, and go up into the hills and the mountains and see some of the great priests and so forth, they have some big locks also. If you go into India and you look <coughs> at certain of the people in India who are from the Dravidians or the Arapaho position, right? They call them the Sadhu. They have some big long locks and they like, they don't eat this, they don't eat that. They practice perfect spirituality. You know, if you go in Zimbabwe, I've been to Zimbabwe. <coughs> this place I'm telling you about, I've been there. I went to Zimbabwe. The <coughs> Perfect Ela down there. She was. She had some big long locks, man. Really? Yeah. So up and down Africa and places like that where you go and you check out the locks represent that heights to us as a people. You know, but a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people are following it in terms of fashionable dread, a fashionable way of life. There is no doubt that everyone who has locks feels passionately about it. No matter what, they eventually grow to love their hair as their hair grows. These next two participants may come to the same conclusion about whether there's a difference between dreadlocks and locks, but take a good listen to how they arrive to their conclusions. I'm a loctician. I've been doing hair for about six years. Um, I started my own personal lock journey about 15 years ago, 14, 15 years ago. And the reason I started was because um, I was embarking on a music career. Um, I'd only just started, so I'd started my first like, layers of singing lessons and then it kind of escalated really quickly and when it escalated I found myself wondering what I would be like as an artist and um, I decided that I didn't want to be what I could see on TV like you know weaves and all this kind of so I started growing my locks and as I started growing my locks Lauren Hill dropped her album just to kind of like certify that I was doing the right thing and that's why I have lots now. So I wanted to, um, as an artist at the time, I wanted to break the stereotypes, um, especially for UK artists. Um, even though our UK artists were quite scarce on the ground, what they were doing was producing a lot of carbon copies of what was going on in America. So I didn't want to be any part of that and so thought that by wearing my hair in this fashion um, I would I would one stand out and number two I would kind of break some stereotypes. To me the difference between like blocks and dreadlocks is probably people's perception, personal perception anyway. It's, it's a it's an extension of yourself. Your hair is who you are, you know, however you want to have it. Colours, bald, long, short. People have their different perceptions of things, you know. It could it could be in the sense of why did you start growing your hair? Let's say your hair, because you know, dreadlocks, locks. I felt for myself free letting it out, growing it letting it do its thing but then I also felt good when it was done twisted retwisted you know it, it makes you feel worth something because you might look at me with dreadlocks and say are you a rascal no but you got dreadlocks Okay, so what does that mean? You have to be rested to have dreadlocks. Some people do it for religion. Some people do it for style. Some people do it 
just to let it grow you know what I mean they, do, they just want to let it grow and it's grown into three blocks you know just free form just doing its own thing it wasn't just people it was an energy it was an energy of love that was being drawn towards me so I am um, I started to read, I started on a book called The Medulite and, um, and then it just kind of escalated from there. I started reading about their diets and um, as I got more into it, um, I decided to, to, to look at my own heritage, to look at my own um, background as an African. I'm originally from South Africa. Very young children on the street with locks, but they were they were natural form, they were free form, they weren't these tailored locks, so to speak. So I started to ask questions, you know, to their mothers on the streets. I was asking them like, how come you decided to lock their hair so young? And to my surprise, the answer was they were born like this. So I learned that there is children from Nigeria predominantly who are born with dreadlocks on their head and they're called dada. They're seen as sacred children. If, if you cut their locks, the, the hair will grow back in exactly the same way. It will never grow back in the single follicles. So just hearing this information that we are actually born with these, this hair took me even deeper. Because I'm thinking to myself now, well, this is more than just a statement of, of freedom when it comes to, to wearing this hair. This is something a lot deeper, it's sacred, it's spiritual. And these children that they they honour, you know, they would never cut their hair, they are they are they are seen as special children it would mean then that to have this hair we are special. And, to, and, and we are clear about it when we choose this hair. Um, and no matter how, how you go about it, it always comes back to you. So if you start it as a fashion statement, that love and that respect always seems to come back to you. I get it all the time from my clients. I, I, I have about 70 clients and they all have this energy about them of pride and even the, the little ones that I'm starting, the three-year-olds, they love their hair, they're so happy. I post them on my Instagram and see their massive smiles because they're so proud of, of what they're representing. And I'm not even sure if they're conscious of what they're representing, but they feel it and, it, and it's displayed in their, in their energy. Now let's take a step back for a minute and really look at how this hair type became so much more acceptable now than it was when it was first introduced in the Western world. The way the mentality surrounding the hair and symbolic meaning come into play, especially when talking in reference to the Rasta culture and the Rastafarian religion is definitely important and worth mentioning. When you were younger, before you even got involved in this kind of lifestyle, this hair lifestyle, when you saw a man with hair like this, your first impression or instant thought of him is Rasta, or Mali, Peter Tosh, you know, Beanie Man, even Movado to this day. You would consider them Rasta. Is that because of where they come from, what you know they do, and whether it's, it's, it's a religion to them or a fashion statement? Five Scar Tell had, you know, some locks for a little short period of time. Was he Rasta? Is he Rasta? Buffalo Soldier, Dreadlock Rasta. Dreadlocks, it, it, the two go in hand in hand. But now it's so worldwide that you've got 
celebrities sporting dreadlocks. Different colours, different shapes, sizes, different looks. Are they wrestlers? But what they got in their head? Dreadlocks, locks, you know, could be extensions. But it's just labelling. If someone has their hair out with an afro picking it, what is it? Is, is it afro or is it bob? Is it a, a round thing on their head? Is it a dog? It's just an extension of a label of what your hair is. Oh, I like your dreadlocks. Oh, you're getting your locks done today. It's kind of, you just. It's an abbreviation, you just shorten it. it I, to me, dreadlocks, locks, they, it seems the same. You know when you see a man with dreadlocks or his hair done up, you say, yo, your hair looking nice, you know what I mean? Like, bro, you're sporting them locks. All right, respect, you know what I mean? Or even when I go out, they be like, yo, rasta, or you feel welcome into the community without even saying, oh, this is what I am, this is what I do, this is what, you know, rasta's are about peace, love, and unity, and, you know, solidarity, and all them things, like, blessings, to rasta for our right, I and I, you know what I mean, like, positive vibes. Yeah, there's the stigma around people with dreadlocks so I'm a bit dread. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's all labelling. I've had people say, oh, are you a fashion dread? What's a fashion dread? What, someone that wants dreadlocks because it looks cool? Or are you a real dread? What's a real dread? You know what I mean? Do you, do you see how long these are? I've had to I had to twist them into each other because they're that long. When I started them, I think the only person who probably was known for having locks way back then was the man. I can't tell you no other, you know what I mean, besides like Bob Marley and everything, but those are iconic legends that you know their history, you know what they've been through. Why the Buster Man had dreadlocks? For years. And he had, in the industry, the best looking dreadlocks. As you delve deeper and you speak to the Rastafarians, they, you ask them about their hair and they say it's antennas. You know, these are the, their hair absorbs the energy of the universe. Hence why they cover it up most of the time because they don't want to absorb any other energies that are around. But when they let them out in meditation and in groups, they are they are absorbing the positive energy of, of the source of God of Jah, as they say. So again, it it you bring that back home and you you, 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 you don't just see long luscious hair. You see antennas, something that you want to kind of protect and to 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 honour. Another thing that brought me, another thing that this reminds me of is when I'm on the street and people go to touch my hair without asking. Perfect strangers will see my, oh, your hair so, and their hand will come. And you know, I've seen t-shirts like, don't touch my hair with a black girl kicking, kicking with someone down. Like it's, it's the energy that it possesses. And when we talk about energy, it's not only the positive energy that it absorbs, you also see when people um, people have a bereavement or a loss of some kind, the first thing that they go to do is cut their locks off. I've done it. Um, I, I, was, I was in a relationship for a very, very long time. And when the relationship ended, I cut my locks off. And they were about, they weren't as long as they are now, but they were a pretty good length, a good six years worth of growth. And my hair because of the energy I felt heavy so I didn't know what else to do but to cut my hair and I'm not gonna say that I didn't miss my hair I missed it once it was gone I was like it felt like Samson you know losing his strength but it grew and it grew back very quickly and it grew back healthy and it, it, it's 
it's lovely. Like there's no I, there's no other way that I can describe our hair. It's it's so beautiful. And even on Europeans, I think it's beautiful. I think it's I think it's just it's a natural way of being, you know. So um, as far as I'm concerned, locks are the most beautiful statement of hair that especially African people can wear. It's our crowns, you know, and it's our it's our connection to all that is. These perspectives are proving to be quite interesting. But now I would like to dive even deeper into the hair itself. Perhaps the maintenance has something to do with the term dread. Even if you who are watching this may not agree, there are still some people who believe that the way it is looked after has something to do with whether it is called dreads, locks, dreadlocks, and so on. Watch these next three ladies as they explain their thinking around that notion. My name is Sandra, and next year will be four years that I've locked my hair. My name's Pamela, I'm Sandra's sister, and on the 23rd of October will be five years since I've locked my hair. Do you prefer neatly twisted almost all the time or the untouched nappy? Well, I'm a roaring lion of Tudor. Man ain't got time to play, yeah? I don't fix up my locks. The most my locks gets is a bit of water and then I'm gone, in it. I don't believe in this pampering and grooming of the locks. I find it unnecessary and I find it still conforming to stereotypical westernised preferences. I am not here with my locks to fit into society. Society has to adapt around me. So I, no, I don't preem my locks. I don't preem it at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah, it's the truth. Um, I am the type that has my hair twisted maybe every four or six weeks. Um, that is a personal preference. Um, when I started my journey, I was the type of girl that had short, permed, relaxed, highlighted hair. And then um, I went through a process where I decided that I went natural, but then I had to consider how was I going to maintain my hair and then I decided I was going to lock my hair. And in that decision, I decided that I would always go and have it twisted and styled. That was just my personal preference because I was always having my hair groomed. So um, for me, I'm happy to occasionally twist and style my locks. All right, well, I'm gonna to touch on that. You see, the reason why I started to lock is because I used to be this Beyonce, Rihanna, wanna be Europeanly accepted, some Barbie doll thing, and it weren't working for me. My hair, I would perm it, my hair would be long, and then it would drop out. Take time, yam out, yam out, and it was enough. The definition of madness is to keep doing the same thing, but wanting a different result. I needed to accept me for who I was. Now, I wasn't given straight hair, so the fact that I'm gonna put a chemical on it to try and maintain a look that is not naturally mine, I found repulsive and offensive. And then I also have two girl children, and I didn't want them to go through that process. So if I could cut that journey for them and they could see me accept my wonderful blackness, my natural nappy state, it would be easier for them to embrace. So you see all of this perming and pruning and all wanting to look what is socially acceptable. You need to check yourself and look at why you find the need to do what you're doing. Can you tell me your story, the story behind your locks? Behind my locks? And what it means to you. Okay. I went through a transition when I was 40. Okay. I made a conscious decision in my life that I was going to change it for the better. Yeah. And that was my whole lifestyle. And with work, working for the people and working for myself, um, the way I carried my hair, which was either straight, with chemicals on it um, that I changed. And, and I played around with locks for a long time and then took them out. I went through a, a not a nice transition. I, I kind of fought with myself 
Do you know what I mean? But I realised how much aware of myself I was and how much I, I didn't like myself through my hair or how much we've been taught not to like ourselves through the way that we looked. Um, I, I'm from Leeds originally in West Yorkshire and when I came to London it inspired me of how many sisters, elders, brothers were carrying their hair so naturally. So it was a natural process then for me to go ahead and it was so easy because I was kind of accepted down here. Do you know what I mean? And I've gone through eight years with relax and it's the best thing I've ever done. We must not forget that personal opinions are important too. It is worth considering how you view yourself and the hair you have because that might be the determining factor for why you may get offended by the term dread if you do get offended. So what do these ladies think of their own hair? What are their experiences so far? Let's see. We know what everybody else thinks of it. You know, how you are perceived. So, what is your own version of that? Well, people um, approach me with caution. And I advise them to approach me with caution. No, I'm not going to lie. I am a black woman and I know who I am. I accept myself 100%. And if you find you need to walk on eggshells, it's better you walk on them. It's straight. I'm not even trying to be militant, but it's better. You see, when I had this approachable look, people thought that they could step and take liberties. Don't step to me and take liberties. You know, I embrace my blackness. I embrace my royalness. And I have no problem if it is an offense to you because I know who I am. I will second that. I agree with you. Um, it's just about us truly accepting who we are and us not no longer being willing to subject ourselves to this mental cruelty that we subject ourselves to by thinking that we have to have our hair coloured, we have to keep up to this standard or this image that the Europeans have set for us. I don't think that we as black women and black people will really come into the fullness of who we are until we truly just accept ourselves in our natural state. All of this chemicals, it's not good for you, all of this we're constantly in two minds, we're in two faces, saying, saying we're black and yet then we pre present ourselves as this, like she said, Barbie doll. It's unrealistic, it's unsustainable. And it fights nature. You know, you cannot fight yourself and fight nature and feel that, you know, I, I, I'm going to touch the next subject. you got them with the weave that's down to the backside. That's not your hair, babes. you got your blue eyes. You are trying to conform to a look. Accept yourself. Love yourself. Love starts from within. This is a spiritual journey and if you don't want to grasp that you are a spiritual human being and you don't want to connect to the Most High, that is your pro choice and preference. But until you start to accept yourself for who you really are, God didn't give you blue eyes, accept it. Don't go and run and buy the contact lenses. Don't go and run and buy the hair down to your backside, put in the blonde and the green. You look, look crazy. Accept yourself for who you naturally are. No, I'm going to be true. real. <laughs> they I see look enough black girls yeah. walking up the road towards me and I question where your mental state is. To have green hair is not natural. To have purple hair is not natural. I understand you might want to dye. You might want to touch up this little colour or touch up your little greys and stuff, but you lot have gone too far. You you do not love yourself and until you start to look within and realize that love can only come from yourself you lot are gonna walk on the road daily as crazy and I don't care who don't like this I'm telling the truth you don't accept you what experience has inspired you most with the life on your head like just being natural not using no combs just being totally natural like my hair grow natural with my my I call them my stripes Beautiful. You know, my grey hair and my stripes, you know, so just let my hair grow naturally. It is beautiful, you know. I remember when I was younger and I, I mix around all nationalities, you know what I mean? And uh, we used to put our cardigans on our hair and think we had long hair, because everybody wanted long hair. But now, I can flash my locks and say, yes, I have that hair, you know what I mean? But it's beautiful, it's a beautiful thing to see. How do you react when people demonise? The hairstyle what's your reaction what's your response when people well, try to talk well, down well it's hard really because i've gone through the transition myself and um 
we've been we've been um, dumbed down a lot, you know, with ourselves and self hatred, and it's years and years and years of it through your parents, through their parents. Do you know what I mean? And it's carried on through the generations. And until we realise that we are beautiful, and we are we are realising more and more now that a lot of us are waking up, you know, to the fact that we are, this skin is beautiful, the, the blackness is colourful, and it's powerful as well, you know? And, and we're teaching it to our children, through the dolls that we have, you know what I mean? About loving themselves. We're teaching them through the histories that we've been taught, not by another culture, but by our own culture, you know? Because our own culture can only tell our story. No other culture can tell our story because they haven't been through it. They haven't been through that struggle that we've been through, you know what I mean? They may have gone through a struggle, but not the ones that we went through. So no other culture can tell us about us. You know what I mean? And we're teaching our children, you know, to love ourselves, to dress in our own natural, you know, we have a beauty, and it looks beautiful. Ooh. I know. I look around, and I see the children in it. I see the, the the brothers in it. I see the mamas in it. I think, boy, what a beautiful! I feel proud. I walk proud. Do you know what I mean? What I didn't foresee in my journey was the fact that it was going to change me inside out by just having this hair. It made me. Um, First of all, it made me um, recognisable to people that wouldn't normally talk to me. Um, number one, the Rastafarians. Um, they started to acknowledge me. I started to hear a lot of Empress, Queen, and it, it threw me. You know, I didn't really, I hadn't really heard anything like that before, especially from absolute strangers. You know, a lot of people nodding when they saw me and acknowledging me, and I was. I was taken aback by that experience, but I also had another experience on the flip side of things from the same, uh, from Rastafarians, Nyabingis in particular, who would, um, who would point out the fact that I didn't cover my hair and also the fact that I dyed my hair and that it was disrespectful and that made me feel quite, um, made me feel bad about my journey, made me feel like a fraud, made me feel like I wasn't, I wasn't representing. So, um, now that I think about it, it, it was the catalyst to really understanding what it was to wear this hair. Um, at, at the time it was, it was a fashion statement, it was also a protective layer, but now that I think about it, it really took me deep within myself, I started to read, especially about ancient um, ancient Egyptians. I started there. That was the only that was the, the easiest, most accessible place to start in finding out about myself on a spiritual level and what this type of hair was drawing to me. Have you had any negative or positive experience since your black journey actually started? Well, um, I know that I am perceived in a militant way when I'm dropping my kids off to school. Some of the parents didn't want to approach me. I'm highly approachable. Some of the teachers might show some kind of trepidation when going into a meeting with me and so forth. And they have to deal with me, it? But do not assume because of my head I don't know how to speak. Do not assume because of my hairstyle that I'm going to come in there and rip off your throat. I can embarrass you verbally without having to swear or carry on away. And my children have to go to that school. They have to be left in your care. I know how to converse. I will converse with you. Don't let your perception of what you think may happen become a reality for you because that's not my reality. And a lot of the times people's own fears ride them to assume the worst. I love my locks. That's, that's, I don't need outside influences to validate why I have done this. I love my locks. So whether my race or any other race want to acknowledge it as something positive, I don't need that. I love my locks. So that's all the positivity I need. Um, I can't really think of any negative experience that I've had that I'm conscious of 
since I've locked my hair. But I would say all round, I think I've had a good experience. I can't say that I feel that I've been discriminated directly because of my locks. Um, so I would have to say no on that one. It's just been a good all round experience for me personally. And this allowed me to grow and thrive as an individual and to become more settled within who, who I am as a person. So yeah, it's been good for me. I'm at peace. Now before we digress, let's get back to the main subject matter at hand. The terms dreadlock and locks. The key word is and always was the term dread. Before we ask these participants their views on it, let's briefly look at a definition of this term. Dread, verb, anticipate with great apprehension or fear. Two, regard with great awe or reverence. Now, great fear or apprehension. And two, regarded with awe or greatly revered. Definitions by Google. Now with these various possible definitions established, we can now move forward. A lot of different people have different interpretation. But my interpretation of it really, that uh, when I and I say talk about dreadlocks, uh, you're talking about something that is awesome. When you look at it, it brings an awe to you, right? That is the dreadlocks, you know? And it has a meaning, right, that uh, you, you, you utilize and follow in a certain way, right? And what it does really is that it, uh, it represents the, the divine within one. Because when they say Rastafari, a lot of people don't really understand the meaning of Rastafari. Ra, if you check it out, the word Ra means what I was talking about, the sun, the head creator. Tafari means the great house, right? Then Aiman is this great house. And the head of this great house is Ra. You understand me? But I have to find it within myself, right? And it's from that level I have to move to become <clears throat> the grandmaster that I am. You know, I don't have faith and I don't have, I don't believe in, I don't believe neither. I have to know. And that's what we need to do. Get back to knowing. Do either of you get offended when people call your hair or call you dread or dreadlocks? Please turn the to you. Um, I can't say I've heard anyone specifically direct the word di dreadlocks to me, but as in using that term, I don't like it because I know that I, w I was raised amongst rusters and they always refer to their locks as locks. So for me, the word dreadlocks has a negative connotation, which means to me, how does these people who perceive me when they look at me, is it their dread? Is it their fear that they see? And is that the connotation that's attached to it? So for me, I don't necessarily like that word. And I refer to my locks as locks as according to Numbers chapter six, because God talks about the separating yourself, not cut, um, putting any razor, a male or female, and that you shall grow your locks. So therefore, for me, the terminology is locks. I lock my hair. I don't, I'm not offended by the term dread locks. I'm not offended at all, because the rusters back in the day were dread. They were feared, they were terrible, they were awesome. And if people want to project their fear on me, I'm fine with that because it's still your inner fear. It's got nothing to do with me. So you can use it in a negative connotation. It don't affect me. My hair is my hair, isn't it? And yeah, you know what? There is a part of me that is ruthless and dread, isn't it? So it is what it is. It's the truth. I'm, I'm fine. How do you feel about um, the term dreadlock? Dreadlock? Like I just said, I don't use the word dread. Yeah, because it comes from the word dreadful. Yeah, so these are my natty, my locks, whatever you want to call them, you call them, but not dread, because they're not dreadful, you know what I mean? Uh, locks, yeah, we just call it short, but we have to be careful of the words that we use, you know what I mean? And what people uh, 
Yeah, we have to be very, very careful of the words that we use. You can know? you, can you, can you, can you, can you, for the purpose of this interview, because a lot of people don't understand the power of using a negative term. Can you tell, tell me, you know, why you don't use it? Like, why you don't like it? Well, you have to look into the words, you know, of, of where it come from and the meaning behind it. You know, dread is for the word, dreadful, you know, so we just don't use that word. A lot of us Caribbeans and, you know, from the Caribbean, we look into words, you know what I mean? And we don't use them lightly neither, you know? And as I've got older and older in my life, I take certain things more serious. I listen very carefully as well, you know what I mean? To how people speak and what they're about and look into people's souls. So you can figure out, you know, you, you go through life. I'm 51 now. You know, wow. you, you go through life and wow. you, yeah, you understand, so I'm your mama. <laughs> No, you, you go through life, you know, you go through life and you go through stages, which you go through and you learn about life and stages and when you get to this stage, you should have a balance, you know what I mean? And accept certain things and not accept certain things in your life, you know, you have more of a choice. Do you think there might be a, a difference between, let's say, a black person saying the word deadlocks, calling you deadhead or something like that, versus... Caucasian okay, let me tell you, both people, if they have not studied or looked into it, are both going to come from a negative place. They're going to come without understanding and without research. So if you don't want to research it, you've already proven yourself negative. You're coming from a negative place. I don't have to receive your negativity. So if it's black, if it's white, it's fine. You need to maybe go back and look at the history of the dread luck rasta and where they're coming from and the path that they have chosen. This is a spiritual walk. I haven't chosen to lock my hair because I want long hair. That was a part of my original um, reasoning, but through locking my hair, I have realized that there are spiritual connotations to this locking. You become closer with the Most High. You get to understand that your hair is your strength. And if you look back at Samuel, he was told, um, Samson, he was told, don't cut your locks. And when they cut his locks, he lost his strength. There's an inner strength that comes from your hair. Our hair is our crown in glory. So there is no way I can be offended because you take my crown in glory as negative. It's a positive thing to me all around. I'm positive. <laughs> it's the truth though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, I kind of agree with her on that. It's how it's a it's a it's a journey it's a growing process and it's a hurdle that you have to learn to overcome within yourself um just like the other day i was walking down the road and for the first time i was conscious within myself that as i walked to work and there were these people walking past i'm not going to say their race and they were looking at my hair i literally thought yeah I, i've arrived i'm good you don't phase me. You don't make me feel the slightest bit uncomfortable because you know what? I'm comfortable and I know who I am. And I thought, yeah, you keep going because I'm good. When I see a dread approaching me, I get ultimate respect, you know? And when I had oh, my straight yeah. hair and my, you know, trying to look like Beyonce and all of that, I never got that. So there is an acknowledgement within my race, whether what, nationality they are if they have got locks there is an ultimate respect that you are met with that a lot of black women do not realize you are accepted in a different way mm, i think that you're um for i think for both genders whether male or female you're held in a bit more of a high esteem i think it shows you that you're more aware of who you are culturally and that you're comfortable and that you are actually using the iconography to demonstrate that um, of that that journey that you're actually t taking because it is normally frowned upon so you have to be um, someone who sees yourself as separated when we were kids growing up our uncles and several family members had locks and they were referred to as dotty dread now I know my mum never wanted me to lock my hair and this weren't a rebellious act this was a choice, a conscious choice and a conscious decision. And I'm not gonna lie, it's the best choice I've ever made. You see, all of this wash and go, that's what I'm able to do, isn't it? I'm not even gonna lie. I get up in the morning, I take my cap off my head and I'm good to go, isn't it? 
and I don't spend time pruning in the mirror five minutes here and oh, it don't look right and then having to comb out and all of that I threw the comb away <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie my comb's in the bin the word dreadlock where do you think all that comes from you know what does it mean I don't know exactly where the word dreadlock come from. I know that we have been locking our hair back from Bible times. I know that. That is 100% verbatim. It's in the Bible. You can go and look for it. She's already given you a scripture. Um, but I believe the terminology came from the Western. It was given to us as something that was negative. You know, when we were growing up, the Rusters did not have a good outlook. And, you know, but Wandsworth and Brixton, they used to run the place red. So they were dread though, weren't it? Come on, let's be real. You know, not heartless, because they used to take up the little young ones. They used to feed them and show them the way to go. And they had a positive influence. And I don't think that was liked. They like it if the children are running wild, running ragged, nobody can talk to them, no one can't rein them in. And so we don't have that kind of community no more, but we have wild, bullish children that don't want to listen to their parents, that don't want no one to talk to them and feel that they can do as they please, when they please. So at the end of the day, bring back the old dreadlock Rasta man, <laughs> come on, because that, that was a community. They helped gather the children. They helped teach them the path that they should go. Now, not all of it was positive, but you can't tell me it was all negative. I think that it comes from the perception of the European um, and it carries that negative connotation. I think it's how they perceive them. It was their fear, their dread on the, how they perceived the, someone with locks. Um, I think that yeah, the, it, 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 I think it was something that was definitely inserted to carry a neg negative connotation. And I think um, a lot of that is still held quite high. Well, in this modern day, just to use an ex-terminology, you know, there's a lot of negative aspects that are stigmatised around our black men. You know, if they wear a hoodie, then they are perceived dangerous, scary, like they are gonna do a crime or something but the first people to wear hoods we know was the Ku Klux Klan so you're always projecting your fears because you know what you did when you was hooded and no one could see your face so now you're protected projecting your own behavior on us so you have this habit of creating something and then terminalizing in yourself and becoming fearful of what you started so you know you started the hoodie thing now the hoodie's running you not riot and it? it's, it's the truth I think it's safe to say that the fact that there are two different terms, both having the word locks in it, suggests that there is a difference. Another reason why there may be a difference is that most people at least notice the difference in saying dreadlocks or locks, while some people still get offended. That's my conclusion. Let's hear theirs. It's almost like an abbreviation of a name. You know, my name is Mandisa. I'm called Disa. I'm called Mandy. I'm called D. But I'm still essentially Mandisa. So if dreadlocks and locks are separated, it's essentially just an abbreviation. It's the same thing. Regardless of how it's interpreted, whether it's Freeform, whether it's interlocked, two-strand twist, it's matted hair on our heads that we rock in any fashion we see fit. And there isn't really a difference as an abbreviation. I feel like there are differences in the people that wear them, but not necessarily difference in the hair itself. Because I have clients who have free form and I have clients who have lots similar to mine which are much um, more tailored, more specific to, to whatever we want. You know, um, I knew when I walked into the hairdressers to get my locks done, I said I knew what 
size I wanted them to be, I knew what, they, what I wanted them to look like, you know, but when, and, and I, I guess those would, would be perceived as locks and dreadlocks, I would probably say that if people think of the word dreadlocks, they might think of Bob Marley, you know, and that type of much more freer form, thicker, more denser type of look. But there's no difference, it's the same thing. And these are dreadlocks, locks, same thing. In society, what is considered a clean cut shaven man? is a level one, no beard, maybe a moustache, a little goatee thing, just proper trim cut, with dreadlocks, your hair is so free, it's only right that your person is so in line with that free spirit kind of vibe, that your hair has to be the same, I couldn't cut my hair, because I felt like I'm doing it to fit in. You know what I mean? Going to job interviews, getting with your hair plait, you're seen as you know a young urban kid starting to grow my locks. I think to me, I started to see a bit more respect. You know, how many times have you heard, oh? I was talking to I was talking to this guy the other day. Your veggie man, you know the one, the one with the dreads. No, I was talking to your veggie, the, um, the one with the locks. You know what I mean? It's it's the, it's either the slip of the tongue or the representation of yourself. I feel like dreadlocks are the grown uncles and dads and grandfathers of and forefathers of the, the, the style. Locks is just what you got in your head. You know what I mean? And what you got in your head? I got some nice flowing locks. Like these locks are beautiful. What golden locks had? Locks. You know what I mean? Gold. She had she had golden locks. Even if one of my brethren one of my brethren said, oh, oh well, I'm dread. And I turned around to him and said, Salam alaikum act. First and foremost, no. Are you offended? Why are you offended? Is are you offended because of who said it? When someone says dreadlocks? Or are you offended at the term dreadlocks? But you hear it so frequently and fluently from amongst people who care for people and know people, you must assume that it's not a negative term. What is the difference? Where is the difference? Because there could be a white man who's got locks. That's a rasta. To me, the difference between dreadlocks and locks is just basically the same thing. You're just taking out some less, you know, a word, you know what I mean, like, no different. You think that you would have achieved this feeling if you didn't have the, the hairstyle? The, the locks? Yeah. Of course, of course, I could have an afro, I could just leave my hair. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's not this, you know, it's in here. In here. It's okay. your spirit, it's your soul. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And that comes with passion, it, it plays out, you know what I mean? So what you feel in here, it plays out. It's not what you see here, it plays out from in here to see here. You know what I mean? So some That's people can walk around with a pretty face, but inside they're ugly, it makes them ugly. Do you know what I mean? Same thing, some people can say, boy, they're girl ugly, but they could be the be most beautiful person ever, you know what I mean? Because the inside, and that's what it is, it's about the inside of you. Now, I've just spoken to a sister just a minute ago, just before you came, and she had short locks. She just started off and she went, she looked at me and she went, why sis, it's, it's getting me down, you know? I said, sis, I went through the same thing. I want it to be long. What is a flashy? You see all the sisters and it looks so beautiful. But I just said to her, I said, look, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful, the shortness that is, it looks beautiful. Take time, everything takes time, you know what I mean? Can't rush nothing, you know. 
If it's to be, it will be, and it'll grow beautiful, you know what I mean? But you're all beautiful as you are. So Aww. allow it, man. Just allow it, you know? What would you say if there is a difference? <laughs> what would that be? Well, the difference between... In our day, when we was growing up, what did they used to call them? The fashion dread? Yeah, fashion dread. Um, I don't know what the terminology is for them now. Some people that lock their hair just for a fashionable statement. Um, there is a difference. There's a big difference. One is spiritual and one is physical. Um, I have chosen the um, spiritual journey and I find it that it has been extremely beneficial, not just to my hair, but to my soul, to my outlook, how I treat my children, the perception that I have of myself. I cannot just lock my hair and keep eating the swine, keep doing the things that I was doing before and expect to have a spiritual journey. When you make that definite choice, if it is a hairstyle or if it is a life choice, that takes you from the chaff and the wheat. I don't want to be chaff. The difference you can see in the iconography in itself, there's not meant to be no shaving of the hair, whether you're male or female. You're not meant to be having no colour in your hair because you're meant to be opposing certain things. And if you're being culturally true to yourself, you accept yourself. You don't put blue hair and shave locks hair, shave hair and a bit of locks hair. So to me, those types of people are just fashion dreads. These are people that are using it as a so-called natural hairstyle. But there are other natural ways you can wear your hair. You do not need to lock your hair if you're not going to walk the journey. But if it's also the food they want to eat and yeah, all of them. Yeah, if on. you do not want to walk the journey. For me, someone who does those types of things, you put your cap where you can't reach it because you're not even following the fundamentals. You're not following it from the basic biblical principles that the rest of them started with. So for me, when I see people like that, I see them as devaluing. I see them as um, create. Um, um, I see them as they're, they're actually committing sacrilege to something that is meant to be actually holy and separate. I see them profaning something that we that 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 rust has held high as a spiritual belief now being desecrated by people and used as um, a fashion statement and a natural so-called hair journey when they are not following the basic principles they don't they they cut they cut their hair they put this color in their hair they don't even follow the basic um the dietary, physical, laws. dietary laws to me they those are the separations so to me those people who do those things are just fashion dread fashion dread that's all they are i don't take them people serious if it is going to be a spiritual journey you cannot expect to eat the things that you are told are unclean any bottom feeder that is pig that is the um shellfish all of those things they are unclean it's like emptying a hoover and then putting it inside yourself you wouldn't do that because you would know that the hoover's content is unclean you cannot expect to be clean inward if you are putting unclean things in you this spiritual walk when i tell you it is not a game and it's a conscious choice that you now put you know i'm going to tell you the truth i used to love prawns but i had to give it up because i understood that it devalued me spiritually it's unclean and if the most high says it's unclean it's not something you question anything in that spirit um in the levitical laws as that dietary law you need to abstain from now, not everybody knows that, but once you become aware of it, you need to make a clear choice what side you are on. Are you on a spiritual journey or are you doing this for a fashion statement? You ca they don't walk hand in hand. When we are told to separate ourselves from certain things, that's exactly what it means. It doesn't matter if you like it, you don't have a choice. So you do what the laws say you should do. And that's the difference. A lot of them, they don't even know what the laws say. So if you're going to live your life in accordance to what you deem fit, then you cannot be a spiritual rasta. You just got a hairstyle. There's the difference.